Okay, so we're here in the middle of the Peak District and there's a hell of a lot of snow about. We're gonna go and have a look at them trees down there. We plan to get some really nice photos, although the lighting's not too great and it's kind of really mute. Um, there's not many greens about, but we're gonna try and get something dramatic, given what we've got. Let's go and have a look. Okay, so we've come into this little creek. We've, uh, it's got a nice, very nice tree line with a load of snow around. It's pretty much the only place around with any color. Um, so I'm gonna try and take a long exposure of the creek, see if we can get some uh, blue to somehow shine out of there. Um, we're gonna be shooting with uh, an f-stop of 22, uh, around six seconds RI, so really low. Um, be using my ND filter with my 10 to 20 mil lens. We'll see see exactly what we can shoot. And that's come out absolutely fantastic. Really nice with the greens and the blues. We got what I wanted. So this is Josh, You'll re you might remember him from our uh, Blue Sky Dreams epic. If you haven't seen that, you can watch that up here. Um, we're gonna take him through what I just did and why you need the settings that you want because he's new to photography, he's just got his camera. Good on him. Um, so what we actually want is we want uh, our f-stop to be around 22, f22, as close as you can get it. Oh, no, no, keep going. Oh, his goes to F32, even better. Um, so we'll, he isn't using an ND filter, so we can't get the same level of darks that I got on mine. So what we're gonna do is instead of shooting at six seconds, we're gonna shoot at 1.5 seconds. And what that does is it leaves the shutter open um, to the sensor for more time, less time. That's what the shutter speed's about. Um, so if we take your wheel, we'll shift it along to be around 1.5 seconds, 1.6, okay. Um, and that'll still give us a decent amount of blur in the water while still not blowing out all our whites because we've still got a hell of a lot of, uh, a lot of snow about. 
Uh, our ISO is obviously really, really low. Our shutter's really closed up. I managed to get mine to be really, really smooth just because of the amount of time that I was able to use, but this is a way that literally anyone can do it. And if you want to go ahead and just... And that looks great. So the difference between one of these lenses and the one that you've just used is obviously you get a much more zoomed in kind of shot. Um, what this allows you to do is it allows you to bring things that are in the foreground much further out of focus. And for things that are in the background can also be further out of focus as long as something is in its depth of field. Um, now the depth of field is the area in which something is in focus at a given time. Um, which is why you can focus to infinity, which means the depth of field is quite far to infinity. And the rest of it is obviously behind that line. And you have different depths of field depending on how big your aperture is. So if you want to bring more things into focus, you can always close up your aperture and slow down your shutter speed, which will introduce more motion blur, or you can up your ISO. Um, which is pretty decent up until you get into like very, very high numbers. Uh, but one of the things is I'd, rec I'd definitely recommend a tripod for using a long lens just because of the amount of shake that you get by hand. A lot of people don't, but I'd definitely recommend using one. And uh, you can get really, really nice tight frames of things that are further away. And then even if you want it tighter, you can then digitally crop. Um, past the original point at which you took the photo. Um, one of the other things that's good about one of these lenses, because it's got a very wide range, you can keep it on your camera. Although it's quite heavy, you can keep it on your camera and just shoot as you go. A lot of people do that as well. So uh, it's a nice piece of kit to have. You've, you've bought really, really well. Okay then, so we found ourselves at some cascades and uh, as typical with uh, cascades and waterfalls I'm going to do a long exposure, probably somewhere around 10 seconds maybe because it is getting a bit dark for what we are, about 3 o'clock but it's really nice, it's really really subdued, we've got a lot of white, a lot of, and a lot of black, a little bit of green and I've just got taken taking the picture now, just waiting for it to uh, take, there we go very nice, I can't wait to get that into Lightroom and see what it's like. Yeah, so I've gone for a uh, 13 second, ex second exposure, F11. Really cutting in close on the waterfall and, uh, and the, a little bit of the water in front. 
really uh, swirling and looking very cool.